guys, welcome to another episode of Midnight Madness Chats with Hardman. I've got a great guest on the air tonight. Uh, please introduce yourself. <laughs> um, sweet. So I'm I'm Marcel. I am a musician in the South African music scene. Uh, play guitar in a band called Thorns of Ivory for quite some time, and most notably is I work for a I'm a host for a podcast called Sludge Underground, which it, it pretty much just exists to focus and highlight South African music. Uh, myself uh, and the CP, who is the founder and the owner of Sludge Underground, we are extremely passionate about South African music. And then also on the back end, there is also Megan, who is also extremely passionate about South African music. So the three of us together, we are the the unit that is Sludge Underground. You might not say it because my face is everywhere, but that the show would not run without those two it would not exist without naz and the back end would not function without megan um so what initially drew you to sludge underground um you know where did it all start so sludge was it's it's pretty interesting where where sludge came from is i'm i'm originally a, a west rand boy i'm from kruger's uh i played bass in a band on that side uh called running from a full moon we were all young we all started it when we were teenagers and yeah, so I ended up moving down to Durban. And in that process of that move, I got all of my vocalist was friends with Nasipia already because a friend of hers was in a band with him. And she messaged him ahead of me moving down saying, Hey, if you know anyone who's looking for a bassist, uh, please hit up Marcel. He's moving down. And so the very first thing I was asked to do was play guitar which was funny because, you know, I'd mostly been playing guitar, just changed to bass for that band, but not long. And then that band became Thorns of Ivory. And from there, Nasipu reached out to me and was like, hey, I'm really passionate about the South African music scene. And I want to talk more about local bands. Like I have this idea, are you interested? And prior to this point, I had also been like, really fangirling over South African bands. I had made like a playlist. I was, I was working in a shitty retail store and I just wanted more people to listen to South African music. So I was playlisting their music in that store and promoting it wherever I could. And with Nasibi coming to me with this idea, I was like, fuck yeah, I've always wanted to do something, but I've never been able to conceptualize and kind of do anything regarding it. So this was a great opportunity. So we met up for the first episode and it was in the back of Naz's car with an iPhone between us. And then that was the first ever episode of Sludge Underground. And from there, it escalated into interviews. And what that entailed was us driving out to fucking random locations, sitting in a car crammed with people with an iPhone between all of us and recording episodes. And when COVID hit, that's when everything, yeah, when COVID hit, everything went digital and just opened up so many doors which is why we've been able to speak to bands all over the country and not just in Durban. Well, we had a conversation the other day. Uh, we, we were uh, going to the premiere of the WAC in 2024, uh, South African, uh, you know, the Sunken State thing. And we were also chatting about it and you were telling me that exact story. And, and, and you know, when you speak, I can, I can realize that you've got a great passion for music and musicians itself. Um, I think we met, if I'm not mistaken, the first time we met at Death Fest, Thorns of Ivory was playing. And I remember that I was just thinking like, this band is fucking crazy. I think um, Matt was take, he took the mic and he hit himself in the <laughs> face until he was bleeding. And uh, shortly after that, he was unfortunately diagnosed with, with cancer. Yeah. But yeah, then we met up with you guys in Durban. We saw you guys be brutal on your home turf, and that was also insane. And uh, yeah, uh, and I and I must, must admit, that, you know, the passion. Like, I, I think there's a lot of things that you can fake as a musician, but passion is the one thing that you can't. And um, yeah, so when I thought about you and and your podcast that you're doing and the the passion that you put behind it, I thought, you know, it must be fun to just have a bit of a chat. Uh, how how has your role evolved since you started Sludge Underground? Oh shit! Like so, initially my role was kind of just hosting. Uh, Naz and I had no fucking idea what we were doing. We kind of we we just dived headfirst in, and m the role initially was let's interview an artist, upload the audio onto SoundCloud of all fucking places, and move along from there. 
And then slowly but surely it started, hey, let's start making these things flow better. Let's start editing them. And so then the role evolved from host to, you know, ed editing. And then it evolved into looking for artists. And then, because initially no one knew who the fuck we were. No one knew anything about us. Why, why speak to us? So we had to go out and ask artists. So we were editing the shows. We were hosting the show. Well, we were hosting the show, editing the show, and then looking for artists on top of that. And it's, it's evolved greatly. Like I, I'm now editing video, which has been a bit of a dive and absolutely destroys my poor PC. Uh, <laughs> that's uh but yeah so it's it's consistently evolving i mean we're implementing things like merch there's a website and the three of us we, initially it was mainly naz and i we had a couple of other people here and there who were helping out with hosting but naz and i were always the core of it and doing the, the main kind of work there but I would say that the the roles have kind of been split between uh, the three of us at the moment, but it's definitely gone from record, upload to there is an entire fucking process now. And the quality has probably gotten a lot better because I, I, I've, <laughs> I've learned myself that when I also started out, it's like I had no idea. My very first podcast I ever filmed, there was like a thunderstorm the day of the podcast and shit was just going Ape shit, bro. I couldn't fucking hear what the person on the other end was saying. I didn't have proper equipment. Uh, I still probably don't have proper equipment. Um, so it's nice to see people progress in life. You know, started out with an iPhone in a car, and look at you now. One of the, actually, not one of the, the main podcaster for the South African, Sub Saharan African uh, metal battle that happened, whack and metal battle that happened not so long ago. Tell me about the experience. Tell me about that. Well, the, the main thing was that like the first thing that comes to mind was exhausting. Like, and I don't mean that in a negative way at all uh, in terms of the event, but we drove up from Durban on the day of the event, got there, set up. We were there till what, like 12, one o'clock in the morning, just grabbing people for interviews. Naz was as sick as a dog. Like I had to drive us. I had to drive his wife's car because he was incapable of driving. How he survived the entire night, I don't know that that man is just a unit like he just he muscled through but just the honor of being asked to be a part of it and to just be there and make content and be associated with that event and everyone involved because there's a lot of big players involved there's a lot of you know you've got people not just people like Emleth events but you've also got you know sonage itself which is heavily involved and you know you're making connections there you're speaking to the guys from midnight energy who are up and coming and doing a whole lot of good things as well there's guys like russell from not russell crow who is one of the most notable like videographers in the scene and you're chatting with these guys you're speaking to the judges who are people like joska who is i would say one of the most like notable alternative creators in the South African alternative scene. And I could, I could list um, like a myriad of people and just being associated with them and having conversations with them, them actually valuing your opinion and having like decent conversations with them. If you had to tell me eight years ago that I would be this deeply involved, I would not, I would not believe it. That's, that's great. Uh, and and uh, what you're saying is what people also don't realize um, I've been following the the Wacken battles internationally, nationally, quite intensely lately, and I've been it's like I've got a desire to achieve that goal. But what people also don't notice is you've got global innovation, like right there. So you've got local bands that all know each other. We've all sort of played together at some point, but then there's a bigger step. There's the international markets that for the first time smaller bands. Um, have the opportunity to go onto an international level and international people seeing this. So even your podcasts, um, I think you're very well spoken. I myself have uh, quite a bit of uh, tongue slips here and there. Um, <laughs> so, Same. So you you get the opportunity to to present yourself to a much much bigger um, audience, especially involved with Wacken. Um, tell me about your process before you're um, about to interview 
a band or a person so like ideally i like to know a bit about the band that i'm interviewing so that involves listening to their music so usually about a week prior i start diving into their music i'll start web crawling for them uh anything that i can find any articles any other interviews uh listen to the music music videos and any like bits of information that i can scrounge from social media so i'll look at your instagram i'll look at your your facebook i'll look at fucking any platform i can find you on and i will make notes of things of oh this is interesting i mean i want to talk about this i want to you know and i'll beyond just talking about their their music and stuff like that and so usually by the time I go into an interview, I've learned quite a bit about a band. I've learned that the hard way because I've gone into interviews knowing absolutely fuck all about an artist in prior years. And it can be a it can be embarrassing. It can be deeply embarrassing because you ask a question like, uh, sorry, that's actually really fucking common knowledge. Why would you ask that? <laughs> so it's definitely something that I, I like to do. I like knowing the artists that I'm going into. Uh there is an unfortunate reality that some South African artists have absolutely fuck all information on the internet. Can I swear on this? Sorry, because I swear a lot. Fuck yeah, bro. Okay, <laughs> sweet. Sweet. A lot of people ask me this question on our show as well. But I've had to interview an artists or I've had to interview artists where there is nothing. I cannot find even the most basic information. And that is frustrating. Okay, because you've approached us. Why? Why can I not find anything about you? Like you've been a band for like four years. Why the fuck is there there nothing about you on the internet? And it's 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 more common than what you think. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's bad, but yeah. Yeah, it's shockingly shockingly common. I obviously won't like drop any names, <laughs> but. Yeah, there, there's been times where it's made my life extremely difficult. I've had to sit there and kind of just thumb suck to figure out where, where shit's coming from. Uh, yeah, but I generally like being as well-informed about whoever I'm interviewing prior to that interview because there's a lot of information you can ask. There's, there's a lot of cool things you can ask, a lot of cool stories that you can get out of someone that might not have otherwise come out. You know, something like a simple post that you can see the band was really proud of. I might not have gotten much engagement online, but you can see that they would be stoked to talk about it. Yeah. And yeah. Now that uh, that's that's something, and it's not it's not just the South African thing. So I, I work with quite a bit of international bands, and uh, and lately I've been having a bad time. So like the one band I, I a while ago. Um, they literally sent me a message. They said, no, just go onto our social media. So I was like, dude, you want me to go through all your posts and read what you are up to? Like, no, I'm, I'm sorry, prepare an EPK. And then like, what is an EPK? And I'm like, no, 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 no. no. What? You should know this. Yeah. I, like, I, I can understand I, smaller bands not knowing what an EPK is, but if you're like an international like act and you're performing internationally, and you're at that point where you're exposed to the international media, like an EPK is essential. Like it's a, a baseline part of what you need. Hundred percent. But it's mostly from from bands that um, sort of are not English. Um, I, I don't want to say like they don't have an English background, so they probably speak other languages. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything now. So normally they they have got a little like thing written in some language let's say German, for instance. And um, now they the, the translation is not as good as you would type it in English. So then what they would do is they would just say, we don't have an EPK. And yeah, oh, okay. it's, uh, it's a nightmare. Um, so nowadays it's because, like you said, I also like to prepare myself a little bit. Um, I, I do find it more comforting talking to people that I know. Like, I mean, you and me, we've we've known each other for a while now. So it's... I'm very, very comfortable. I did do a little prep, um, did a bit of research, <laughs> went on your website and so forth. But uh, yeah, I do, I do not like going in blind. Um, that's that's terrible. And I also, I, what's your opinion? I, I, I don't like inexperienced artists because they've maybe had one or two performances 
So I feel very intimidated speaking to them because I, you sort of have to drag information out of them where where with a bigger artist that have played big shows that have released some albums, you know, it's easier. You can be like, Hey, first album, Hey, second album, you know, where smaller yeah. artists, it's, it's, it's very intimidating. Yeah. Like I, I 100% agree with you. Um, the, but there's a definition. I think there's a, a line between a smaller artist and an in, inexperienced artist, because, you know, you can have a smaller artist who's been around they they're experienced they've been around the block they've, this isn't their first rodeo but then you get the you're an experienced artist and this is something that we've had to kind of implement as sludge because we've had our fair share of interviews like this where the where there's not just very little on social media the artist is essentially brand new like they're fresh out the womb and i don't mean like a brand new project from an experienced artist i'm talking about this this artist has just started making music you don't really have any stories to to tell. And I know that sounds extremely mean. And while Pl Sludge is a platform that is designed to get the voices of artists out there, it's very difficult if that artist has nothing to tell. And you, you don't want to be mean about it, but we've had to start screening, essentially. We've had to start, and that's part of our, our research process is that if we can tell that we cannot find anything about you, this is probably not going to benefit you and it's probably not going to benefit us. It's not going to be benefit anyone involved because our point is to highlight an artist and to highlight South African music. But if you have at this point got nothing to offer, you're not benefiting anyone. People are going to look at you and think, okay, so why, why should I bother? And people are going to look at us and be like, is this what you guys are promoting? And it's like I said, it's in no way designed to be mean at the art to the artist. It's actually kinder to them for you to come back later once you've actually built up a repertoire of some information that was like a repertoire of anything, really. So yeah. On that note, you guys do such a big variety of genres. Um, how what is your process on deciding? Uh, who would be your next artist that you would be interviewing or collaborating with? So initially it was a case of like artists we liked um, or artists that we, we would, we would just obviously watch social media and we would see an artist and be like, Hey, that looks like they could be cool. And we'd reach out to them. But what happens has happened in recent years is that we get more requests for people to be on the show than we could possibly put out to ask people to be on the show. So that's what's happened with the website. Oh, sorry. Um, that's what's happened with the website is there is a guest intake. You submit. That information gets put onto a waiting list. And from there, we will sift through artists and whatnot. And so from there, we'll start saying, cool, here is a waiting list. These are the slots. We do one episode a week. So that's how many weeks are there in a year again? 52? So that's <laughs> uh, 52 episodes in a year. And we will start reaching out to artists from there. Obviously, some artists just don't respond. Uh, it happens. Like, I, why submit in that case? I'm not really sure. But yeah, so Sludge has always been a, a touching on the, the genre, like the variance in genre is when we just recreated this, like, Naz and I are passionate about music, not just alternative music, not just metal music. Um, I love music. That's uh, it's as simple as that. That that's my my passion. Um, I listen to a wide variety of music, even wider since I started doing this. And we designed this platform as something that would give any artist a fair chance to talk about their music. Uh, there are some kind of art like genres that kind of turn their nose up at us. Um, but that's kind of like a, a beef between us and the Durban hip hop scene in general. Please, actually, don't, just don't, don't fucking put that out there. But so yeah, like it's, there's some genres are very weird with us. Um, and that, this is a very big generalization. But but yeah, so we will cater virtually any style of music. And as long as you've got a story to tell, we're, and it's about music, we're there. That's, that's about it. 100%. So you said something now that I 100% could relate to. So like you mentioned, when, you, when you're starting out with this, it's quite a challenge to get artists to, to um, you know, want to be a part of your podcast. 
And um, when I started out as well, I, I like literally asked, you know, all, all the bands I like. And, and, and it's, it's funny because I like a lot of bands and, and people were very, very reluctant to say yes. Um, and I think then I started pulling in the bigger boys like uh, Chris Slade from ACDC. And then all of a sudden, people that I literally begged, like, please, can I talk to you? Were like, can you please talk to me? And then I, I, I sort of don't want to anymore because I feel like you've had your opportunity. Um, have you had any chances or, or uh, opportunities that you gave people that they sort of said no to and then later came back to you? Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we've had that in multiple instances uh, where people like we've actually had instances of people being outright like nasty to us online and then yeah so that's that's cool that's that's rad um i mean i i have one particular beef uh, with a dude named bob perfect uh who was part if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong he was associated with durban youth radio and he was like really big in the scene. He didn't have any interest on being on the show. This is just a rant from my side where with our very first episode, he just started tearing us apart on Twitter and basically saying that we're like sucking the dicks of the anti-retro vinyls and our opinions are shit. And <laughs> it was just like this unnecessary, like fucking lambasting of these fucking bunch of dudes who just started doing something. We were passionate about it. And uh, yeah, from that, there was a whole bunch of other people who were associated with that crowd who wanted nothing to do with us, but then a whole bunch of them ended up on the show, like a couple of years down the line. So what is that? <laughs> I a hundred percent get that. Um, but I don't think there's a thing like bad publicity. Um, I think let's call them whistleblowers sometimes or internet trolls. That's a, I've been seeing that word a lot on the internet lately. Yeah. So internet trolls are there to cause destruction, but sometimes um, them barking at you, you know, brings more attention than anything. So fuck you, internet trolls, take that. <laughs> <laughs> so and, like, there's always room for like growth. And I think for us, like that could have been that was probably a very like a make or break moment early on like that could have because it was someone who was so far above us you know it was someone who had such a bigger influence than us and was so much more entrenched in like the local music like that could have been some that could have been enough for us to turn around and be like you know what is this actually worth it but here we are we were here like eight years later and it's still growing it's still improving and we're still moving on tell me about your proudest artists that you've interviewed and the bigger ones um talk about that how how did you reach out to them how did you get to interview them i think one of the ones i remembered being distinctly like holy shit this is happening was short straw um was was getting to interview short straw they were playing a show in belito and i can't remember the name of the venue but they were all such cool dudes like they were such fucking nice guys and that was like my first time kind of being starstruck you know because i had watched these guys on festival stages you know i had been like they were a huge influence and inspiration to my previous band because we were more of a, a pop punk type of vibe you know we were a lot more commercial and they were a huge inspiration to us and getting the chance to have a sit down and chat with them was amazing it was like mind-blowing and then getting to sit down with bands like Red Helen or Facing the Gallows. And like and these were all guys that I was super inspired by. These guys who I looked up to immensely in the South African music scene. And I think the biggest artist I've ever managed, gotten to interview was um, Inter Shikari when they came down for Ramfest. And that was also like, oh shit, like this is this is happening. I'm speaking to it like an actual like fucking celebrity. And that was also like a really fucking nerve wracking at first, but also one of the most down to earth human beings around. He was just also such a nice guy and was just so open about so many topics. Like he was not afraid to just delve passionately into a conversation with 
just some dude from South Africa <laughs> with a small podcast. And I, I respect him greatly for that. So, so we had a, we had a, uh, the previous <laughs> interview uh, I did, I had the opportunity to interview a band called Nulo. I'm not sure if I'm uh, pronouncing that right, but they're from uh, Argentina. They, they were in the finals, the Vakken finals with um, Middle Grounds last year. Was it, was it Sunken State? Was it Middle Grounds last year? Yeah, last year was Middle Grounds. Yeah, that, that, they were yeah. they were playing with Middle Grounds, and they actually had a bad time at Wacken, and 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 like they they almost rained out, and like Argentinian people are so passionate, so they just like got on the internet and they were like spamming Wacken, and even the the Wacken um, organizers were like, "Is this bots?" And they were like, "No, those are our people telling you that you must let us play," and eventually they did play um and they actually did well but uh as i was mentioning we were we had a bit of a chat about bigger artists supporting smaller artists because that could be a life-changing moment you know if you meet um one of the bigger bands um and and, and they sort of shitty to you like you you might be discouraged and and be like fuck this i don't want to do this but they were name dropping like big things that were smoking like joints with people like Chelsea Grin, you know, like big boys. And they said, you know, the fact that that guy, after they were playing, you know, this guy came off stage and 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 Chelsea Grin was standing there and they were like, ah, oh, you guys were amazing and, and whatever. And this guy was like, it's holy fuck. Like, <laughs> it's know? holy shit. <laughs> exactly. Like, and 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 imagine imagine that so i think big artists should really not be shitty you know um and being able to speak to big artists and just like realizing that these people are you they are cunts let, let's be honest you know they are the ones <laughs> they're off they're off very much so yeah yeah yeah. i've had my fair share of experiences exactly so i just feel like that that's fucking so inspirational you know um but you've never had an artist, a big, big artist that was like a cunt to you at a show or was like trying to interview them? No, not necessarily. Um, like everyone that I've approached at shows has been like, especially as Sludge has been pretty okay. I mean, I've had some experiences with dudes being like cunts, but back in the day, like it's not something I've experienced too much recently, thank God. Yeah, um, I think, I think so you've got to... that, that's... You've got a pretty steady uh, brand right now, and and everywhere you look, you see the sludge thing. And I must admit, I I, I based a lot of what I do off you guys because I find you guys inspirational. Obviously, um, think you guys are doing a fucking great job. What is your future goals for your podcasts? What's next? So, like for us, it's our, our future goals right now is that like our main thing is right now we're tackling visual aspects. So our, our biggest goal is our YouTube channel and expanding that type of content. So we're going to be expanding our range of content. So um, the obviously the visual episodes, that's something that people want more of. They like being able to see those things, but we're also not completely removing the audio only aspect of it. We are looking at doing more like sort of informative and breakdown style videos. So where it'll be one of the hosts. Uh, talking about a specific aspect of the scene, not necessarily an interview, but doing some research and breaking down a certain aspect of what's happening in the scene, because that's something that's also sorely lacking. You've got, I think one of the only people I can think of doing anything like that right now is Keisha uh, from Cape Town, Keisha Detoy. And she is probably one of the, she's like the OG alternative music creator in the space. Um, you do get bigger like channels but they're focusing on a very specific like upper niche sort of thing there's nothing that caters to the lower you know to the, the more unknown and more underground guys uh we're looking at doing live sessions so kind of uh, very similar to what uh, the kexp you could also very much compare it to uh to what france the planet is doing that's also another amazing dude in the scene shout out to, to france he is also one of like the ogs of just making metal and alternative music out there and his live sessions are great if anyone i highly recommend you go check them out so we're also going to be doing looking into doing something like that and then goals down the line like we 
one thing that we would love to reach up is kind of like an awards sort of show where we kind of like the South African Metal Music Awards, uh, where we would do the Sludge Awards. That's something that's quite a bit further down the line. And then the biggest one is Sludge Fest, uh, which is still kind of like just a, a far off glimmer in the eye. But we would love to host our own festival, uh, our own local music festival. That's something that Naz and I talk about pretty much all the time. And here and there, we build up connections to hopefully make that a reality one day. Imagine putting that Wacken show together. I was, I've was i been thinking about it a lot. You've got international, well, la, la, South Af- African bands coming from all over the world with their own little issues, right? You've got bands from Durban. You've got, because I think this year it was Your Cynical Sanity. Fucking great band. Um, you know, Doom Trigger from Cape Town. So now you've got bands from South Africa coming from all over the place. You've got bands from other countries you've got podcasters like you guys like involved with that you have to put all that shit together that just sounds terrible <laughs> yeah no but it's a, it must it's an absolute fucking headache yeah what is your experience when it comes to shows and like all the recent shows you've been to and stuff like that like there's definitely uh, as always there's room for growth like but it's definitely there's been a resurgence of like alternative music and alternative shows and hype and excitement behind them. Um, I think the biggest thing though is at this point in time is looking at the people around us. Like there are people who could be fans of your type of music who don't even know that South Africans are making this type of music. And that's a big part of why Sludge exists as well, is our goal is to get you heard by just everyday people Mm. you know that's that's the entire that's the point like you know people who are passionate about music who aren't necessarily musicians themselves but want to know more about artists because let's be honest before you started making music there were bands you were fans of and you wanted to go learn whatever you could about that band you would go watch and you for me like i watched hundreds like hundreds is an exaggeration but as many interviews as i could involving billy talent or kill switch engage i mean those were like two of my favorite bands growing up and I watched as many interviews or anything that I could find, any media regarding them that I could find. And that is something that we are severely lacking within the South African alternative industry is content creators, people who are passionate about the scene and whatnot. And I put this question up on Facebook a while back, like, you know, asking why is there a lack of South African music creators? And the biggest thing that came back was there isn't, like there's no instant gratification like you're 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 dealing with a niche within a niche kind of deal which is a, a phrase that i use a lot but for people like you for people like me who are extremely passionate about it like my goal is to hopefully inspire more people to create content about it that there is some kind of worth in doing it whether it's a, a passion project or not and if we have to lay the framework for that if we have to be like you know, to lay the foundation down, fucking so be it. But I love this shit, right? <laughs> I love local music. I love South African bands. I've been doing it eight years for little to no reward. Why would I stop now? <laughs> I, I, I think, so... like, like you mentioned, it's hard work, bro. It's hard work. Prepping, like living your life, prepping, playing in a band, maybe added all this stuff. Um, you have to be consistent, you know? And I, I think that, my opinion is that is where most people fall a bit short or it's about being consistent because it's easy to do it like for a month like you've been doing it for eight years bro well fucking done i mean that's that's uh that's fucking hardcore you know so i, I but that's a great question I, I i love that question and and i think i just think it's hard work that's my opinion i don't think yeah, and it's it's also like expanding and growing your content you know if it's not like we've done the same thing for eight years uh we've definitely evolved we've definitely learned and we're definitely expanding and there's been a lot of like lessons on the way and you know as long as you can grow and you can evolve your content then so be it but if you're passionate about music like even as an artist man like we i was talking to keisha and, and jaska about this is there there is there is such a thing as low effort content and do you know what? Sometimes people prefer that. It's real. It's in your face. It's gritty. And it just literally just takes, involves you popping your phone up, 
selfie mode hey these are my thoughts on this artist and whether it's negative or positive it doesn't actually really fucking matter but you could simply do that and shed light on your local scene uh it doesn't have to be what we're doing i mean it doesn't have to be the highest quality it doesn't have to be but there just needs to be more people talking about it last little question how do you handle controversy so depending on the nature of the controversy it usually like it'll stay in like we'll we'll be we'll like talk to the artist afterwards and be like hey listen are you sure about this is this something that you want to remain said and out there on the internet and you know that gives the artist the chance to be like oh you know what actually scratch that <laughs> um, some artists don't give a shit um, some platforms censor it irrespective uh, but for, for the sake of you know transparency and just a, a actual look in the scene i mean that is rock and roll at the end of the day uh, <laughs> it is alternative it is metal so in terms of controversies we'll give people the, the chance to to say what they've got to say but while also um giving them the opportunity to, to retract a statement saying hey listen this might not go down the right way or it might go down this way and if they're not phased by it cool if they are we respect that um, I did have a, a moment with a pretty young band, uh, who I, I messaged them afterwards. I was like, listen, this could potentially damage your, your future careers. Um, I'm putting it out there and I, I, I agree with you, but putting this out this early in your careers might not benefit you. I have a, I have a nasty suspicion that the people that this is targeted towards are going to make your lives a living hell. And I know you don't give a fuck, but I don't think you should make your lives unnecessarily hard. And that segment ended up being taken out because they were like, you know what? Actually, you, you're you right. Thank you for that. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. But in terms of controversies in general, I try to, I try to stay neutral um, because a lot of the times we end up with both parties on the show. Um, a lot of the times we've had people on the show who have beef with each other. Um, like, so we've had the bands, we've had bands on like within it's the space of a few months who do not like each other, that there is a very palpable beef between them. And yeah, so we generally, we generally stay um, out of it unless it's things like the situation with uh, this Duetskrach thing recently, which no one's really sure whether that's a an AI generated thing or it's probably just a rage baiting troll. But if it's like severe racism, we're obviously going to take a hard stand and be like, "No, fuck off," um, so you, shit like that. There's there's there is a line, but if it's personal controversies, like you know you have beef with another person, yeah. it's something we will generally try our best to stay out of. No. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I don't. I don't believe that was a real band. I think. Yeah, no, neither do I. It's. <laughs> I just think it was someone looking for attention. Okay, yeah, hundred so percent. Coming on the show, I just quickly last little note. Uh, I see you've got a very cool little beanie on there. Uh, where can we buy your merch? Uh, where can we see all your podcasts? Um, just tell us in general, uh, quick. Where's all your socials and what's your tags and so forth. Yeah, so 100% merch you can find up on the Sludge Underground website. There is a link to our merch store from there. And I just left my phone up. Uh, you can find us on pretty much every platform as Sludge Underground. So that would be YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We are on all of those platforms. You can listen to the episodes on Spotify, uh, podcasts on Apple Podcasts. Uh, the YouTube podcasts are there as well if you're using YouTube music. And then the visual episodes are up on YouTube. And yeah, we do pretty much weekly content, uh, whether it be an artist interview over the weekends, we're mostly highlighting artists or doing quickies. If you happen to see us out and about, come say hi, come say something stupid to the camera, please. And yeah, that's it. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Until next time, I've been Hardman.